Hi, my name is Professor Zuzu and welcome to my lab. Today we are going to talk about the water cycle. Here is an overall view of the water cycle. It is made of evaporation, condensation, precipitation, collection, perc percolation, groundwater, salt water, fresh water, surface runoff, and transpiration. Did you know that the water cycle never stops moving? As you can see, the, the circle goes round and round. So, um, the water we use today is the same water that we use in the caveman did. So, we, we don't create water, we just reusing the water that is already on Earth. Let's get started. First, I'm going to talk about evaporation and transpiration. This is when liquids turn into water vapors. The liquids come from ponds, lakes, streams, and ocean. The, wa the water absorbs the heat from the sun and it causes wa the water to turn into a water vapor. Transpiration is when water evaporation from the plant. Here is an example of evaporation. As you can see, the sun, the stove represented the sun, and the pot, which is the water, represent the pond. And then, as you can see, the sea is steaming up. That's represent evaporation. So evaporation through the air. Okay, let's move on to condensation. Condensation is when the vapor turns back to liquid and forms a cloud. The water vapor releases heat and with this decline the, the energy, the vapors will cause a cloud formation. Ch let's check it out. Look at this glass if I put over the steam. As you can see, the steam is making the con making the glass fog out, which makes condensation. Now, as you can see, and this is this is a example of condensation when condensation water vapor. Yeah. Zuzu here, reporting live from Storm Central. Lots of snows coming our way, 8 to 12 inches expected. Do you know what its precipitation is? It's snow, sleet, and rain. So, it's snow. Precipitation happens when so much water has condensed and the air can't hold it anymore. The clouds get very heavy and the water drops back to the earth in the form of rain, sleet, or snow. Zuzu Demetrius signing off for the night. My next experiment is going to show you how water becomes groundwater. Here is a, is a gl glass of snow that represents the dirt. In the droplet is water that represents the rain. I add a food coloring so you can see it better. See, see how the filter through the snow? This is the infiltration. Percolation is when the water in the groundwater moves downward through the opening in the soil to replenish aquifers in the ground. Percolation is important for well waters and so that we can have drinking waters. The coffee is like ground dirt and, and the water is going to percolate through the ground.
We are just left with liquor, which represents the aquifers. The experiment you just saw was runoff. Runoff is when water flows from the land to bodies of water, it can help to fertilize and be very important to help produce food. But there could be bad things. If there is too much runoff, it can destroy the plants because plants can actually drown from too much water. Accumulation is when the runoff water flows into a body of water such as lake, river, or ocean. As you can see, the, we have the water cycle, and then here's the runoff, which is its created accumulation down here, which for the river or pond, so forth. Aquifers are underground layers of rock that are saturated with water that can be brought to the surface through natural springs or by pumping. The sun is heating the ground, which is causing the aquifers decrease the groundwater. As you can see, it evaporates through, through it. As you can see, it precip precipitates which will refill the aquifers so you will get more groundwater in the for the wells pumping it's pumping even higher water how is water is connected to life on earth water is needed for all aspects for humans, animals, and plants. Plants need water to grow, and humans and animals eat the plants, as well as humans need water to survive. Ducks, they need plants to eat and water to survive. And boy, do they drink a lot of water. They swim in it too. Let's talk about how water impacts our world. Humans can have a negative impact on water. Water shortage. Humans can harm aquifers. Humans can have a negative impact on the water cycle. Sometimes companies pollute the, the water and that can affect the amount of fresh water we have and it can hurt the living organism in, in the ponds. Sometimes it happens by accident such as an oil spill like the one in the Gulf of Mexico. This can hurt the, the environment and affect the things that live in the oceans. The government has laws and if a company is caused by pollution, it will be fined and have to pay money. Here's a picture of the uh, um, ocean being polluted. Sh shortages. There are times that we have water shortage and not enough groundwater. This is known as a drought. This can happen when it hasn't rained for a long period of time, typically in the warm weather months. When this happens, if you use wells, Water, you can run out of water in your home sometimes when the town notices that we are going close, we are getting close to a drought, so they will have 
a water band telling residents to not use water for unnecessary things such as cleaning the cars. And then here's a picture of dropped. Aquifers. Aquifers can get polluted from oil spill and the improper disposal of chemicals. Sand is a very good filter and if the aquifer is in sandy soil, it may be less of an issue. 